Today we're going to learn how to create a simple home page. And the first home page you would ever create would be the index page. I'm going to name it index.html. I could call it index.htm. I could call it default.htm. I could pretty much call it anything I want. Although the original page that was by default loaded on the earliest systems, if you didn't specify a file name, it looked for index.html. Today there are lots of other possibilities, but we're going to call this index.html. We're going to make it all lowercase. We're not going to have any space bars in a word or anything like that. Very simplistic. And it's going to eventually go into our public HTML folder out on our, on our server. But in the meantime, let's begin with line one, where I'm going to put, you'll see a less than symbol, an exclamation point, then it says doc type space HTML, and then a greater than symbol. That's a special designator that indicates that you're using HTML5 to write your, your web pages. Now, like all web pages, they begin with tags, and most tags have an opening and closing tag. Almost all tags will have that. They, so the HTML tag opens with HTML in a less than greater than symbol, and it closes with a slash HTML. It doesn't really matter technically if you did uppercase or lowercase, although under HTML5 it should all be lowercase. And uh, it just for ease of, of reading, we'll, we'll do that anyway. Now, the beginning part, uh, each HTML page is broken into a head area and a body area, but we'll start with the, the head area first. And uh, we're going to put in a title. So you notice everything head to slash head, and inside of that is title to slash title. And you notice there's nothing embodied right now, but the My Course homepage, where that will show up is just uh, in the, the browser, up in the title bar of the browser. So it won't actually appear inside the browser. You won't see those words unless you're looking up in the title bar. Anyway, in the body, you'll notice I've added <coughs> class equals default. That won't actually do anything right. Eventually it will, when we get talking about CSS pages, Cascaded Style Sheets, which is another lecture. But for the, for the time being, I'm going to put class equals default. And I'm also going to put up in the header area, you notice, this is one of those things that does not have an open and close tag, a link. But the link has special parameters that go with that. Inside the link, you have an rel equals style sheet, href equals hypertext ref, you know, uh, style.css, and type equals text slash CSS. That's something that we're going to write once and pretty much not change. We will have a couple reasons to change it. The fact that it says href equals style.css means that there's a file called style.css that's in the same folder that this file is going to be in. And it's a style sheet, and it's going to automatically load. The presumption here is that style sheet has something in it called a class. And the name of the class is called default. And whatever that is, that's the style that's going to appear inside the body. Now, we don't actually have a file called style.css, so when it loads, it'll just, it'll, you know, it won't actually error out. It'll just show nothing. The first thing to put in our body is something like website development, uh, the topic for today. And uh, you'll notice it goes inside an H1 tag. There's multiple heading tags, H1 through, I think it's H7. And again, it's H1 in the beginning of the tag and slash H1 at the end of the tag. You notice H2, I've written just spring semester in here. And you'll see when we take a look at that how that's a little bit smaller than uh, an H1. But we'll get to that momentarily. The next area I have is a, a div or a division. And uh, I've named that division my info. So it says div id equals my info. And that's going to do certain things together. Now, what are those things? Well, it all depends on what my info means. Because my info would be another tag inside the style.css file. And inside of there, maybe I've made uh, different color fonts, or maybe I've made a different style font or a different size font. There's all sorts of things that I could do inside of it. But what I've said is, in this division, it's named my info. And if you go to style.css, you'll find out what my info means or, or what uh, the formatting attributes are of my info. At the moment, there isn't any, so you'll notice website development, uh, spring semester. And um, <clears throat> you saw the differences in sizes there for the H1 and H2. 
After that, I'm going to add a, an H3 homepage. I'm going to add a paragraph. The paragraph, of course, goes from P to slash P. And I've written it kind of in a funny way. This page, and I put a bunch of spaces, and will be updated periodically until May uh, of this year. Now I'm going to take the word updated, and I'm going to make that bold face. The way I'm going to do that is I'm going to begin with a B and end with a slash B. So that tag says any, anything in between becomes bold face. So I have a paragraph, but inside that paragraph is only one thing that's bold face. I didn't mention the fact that the page to will has a whole bunch of blank spaces, and what's going to happen there is absolutely nothing. It's going to treat all those spaces as if they're one space. The second way to do it, though, is to put this in something called a pre-formatted pre text. And then if you put pre to slash pre, what you'll find is that when you put that exact same data, the uh, site will be updated periodically until May. It's going to appear exactly as you wrote it. So uh, periodically is on a line, until is on a line, May is on a line, and there's spaces between site and will. So if you put the pre tag, pre of course goes from pre to slash pre. If you put that, you will see exactly what you, what you see is what you get sort of. It's pre-formatted. Now I've, I've added another division here called reminders. And when you give it a division, an ID, that's different from giving it a class. I, I mentioned class earlier uh, with the body. And what that will do is if there's a class called default, it'll do whatever er the body all gets that, except for the areas that have different names, like ID equals my info and ID equals reminders. And there, there'll be sort of localized formatting that will take place, whatever is in the style sheet. So... Um, why would you use class sometimes and ID another time? Well, ID is typically meant for there's one instance of it on your website. Class means you're going to use it probably in multiple pages. So that's the difference there. Now, inside this ID equal reminders division, uh, I've created an ordered list, OL for ordered list. Of course, it ends with a slash OL. And in that, you have list items, LI to end with a slash li so i've got several list items that i'm putting here inside the ordered list and and then i'm actually going to add something called a table table goes from table to slash table no big deal there and tables have a couple different uh rows a table row tr inside of tr you normally have something called td we'll see that in a moment but this has th which is a table header so i've got course as one table header and description as a second table header, which means it's essentially a two-column table. How many rows are in it? Well, it depends on how many I put. So a, row, a table goes from table to slash table, a row TR to slash TR, and inside of that could be TH for table header, or we can add TD for table data. Now, if it's two columns, course and description, you would expect that inside of each row, a TD, a table data, would have, again, two. So we have CIS 170 is the table data, and uh, intro to uh, tweeting is also table data. Those are the two different ones for the second row. And I can add a couple more rows there just so I fill that out. And uh, that's pretty much how it's going to look as a, as a general rule. And that will be a home page that we will save, uh, at least for the moment, in our uh, public HTML folder.